Welcome back to Supermoto Land. This is part two of the um, uh, blog about the uh, 253 hour engine that we ran. Um, so this is the chassis, it's all stripped out now. And obviously all the bits and pieces, all stripped out there. I just thought I'd show you, um, and everything's been cleaned up, but um, obviously, there's all like the bearings and stuff that I can't see any play on those. There's no scouring or anything like that. So all very clean and and good within the actual engine in the cases. And there, uh, obviously the gearbox there again, checking all the, the, the teeth and stuff. It all looked pretty good to me. I couldn't see any signs of wear and that's quite an old engine that's you know raced hard for sort of three years and then being the race school bike over here's the piston that came out so this was i think i said 144 hours so you can see there's quite a bit of discoloration under there and sort of blow by um around the edges i think that's really just an accumulation of time um you get that anyway because i can't believe there was it was losing much compression because of the performance on the dyno you know it's still producing good power uh, so, you know, whilst I would have obviously changed that, it's well overdue, it was still performing pretty well. There's no signs of cracks or anything like that, which, uh, again, is good. The cam came out, um, again, just, just clean that up, but, uh, there's always a little bit of marking here, but it is, um, it cleans up, you know, it's nothing that actually, uh, affects the cam itself. So that was all good. Um... This this was a cylinder. Again, I've cleaned this up, but I think you can see in there just the normal signs of a little bit of wear. I haven't actually measured it. Um, I haven't had time to be honest. I've, I'm flat out sort of preparing the bikes for our first race, so I've just stripped this down, cleaned it, and then we'll measure it and get ready for reassembly probably in the next couple of weeks. But there's no signs of damage there. I've just run a quick hone through it. Um, but again, I'm sure when I measure that up, you'll find there's hardly any difference between a, a brand new um, cylinder and that old one that's done uh, 254 hours. Uh, again, valves, these are the original valves, all cleaned up nicely. No, no signs of deterioration or anything on there. Um, now, here's an interesting bit. This is what happens, you're, you're probably used to your KTM or Husqvarna not finding neutral very easily. That's because this happens. See how it burrs over on the little neutral bit? So that's why it's more difficult to um, to get your bike into neutral after a time. So you do need to replace these. Um, I'm not sure how long this one's been in, but we normally leave them in only sort of 80 to 100 hours, depending on the rider. Sometimes we replace them with the older type steel ones, which are, are more prone to damage, but don't deteriorate like that. Um, clutch, that all look pretty good. Always does with the slipper clutch. Uh, these, the plastic gears, uh, now they, they're they gone tight and there's a couple of shards of plastic you can see down there that come off them. So they need replacing. Uh, they were still operating the oil pump all right. So there was no actual problem as such, but obviously, uh, you, you know, they, they would have failed eventually. So, um, that they need replacing for the rebuild. Here's, here's the crank. Um, again, I'm, there's my little sketchy diagram, but it was all within tolerance. Um, that's done 253 hours, uh, the original OEM crank. Um, uh, it's difficult to show you with one hand, but there's hardly any, well, you know, I can't feel any movement. It all, everything's a tight fit, it all, works there's no there's a little bit of rub at the top there you can see where it's gone through but it's all in good all good order you can see the pin now you, you see that that's that that is area there is where the oil works now that's all fine either side of that is where it's kind of um you get this on the cranks where it's working hard where it's sort of um distorting the webs are sort of distorting on the pin so you get this kind of little effect here. Um, again, nothing too much to worry about, but it does show the stresses that these engines go under. 
Um, but again, the, these are all good. You know, nothing, nothing looking too worn or, or scoured or anything like that. And all really due to, to these boys. Like I say, that's the engine oil we're running, the Putaline Entec SPR Plus. Um, very, very good oil. As you can see, we, we ran that engine experimentally for a long time overdue. Uh, the crank should be replaced at 100 hours. We did 253 hours on it. And the piston, that should be replaced 50 hours. We did 144 hours on it. Um, so, you know, quite quite impressive results. I wouldn't recommend um, doing it at home. <laughs> we, you know, maybe not, not to that extent. Um, I did have my fingers crossed, but to be honest, I think that engine would have kept running and it was still pr producing good power. So it just shows how good the Husqvarna KTM engines are when you use the correct oil. And again, we were changing every sort of five to 10 hours, changing the oil and filter, um, which I think is what most people do anyway. And there you go. Um, I'll do another little video shortly about us preparing to race. There's our bikes all lined up. We race in a week's time at Albaida for the first round of the Spanish Championship. And uh, I'll show you exactly how we're preparing for that. Till next time.